Welcome to the Between Two Wheels podcast, where we talk about all things on and between two wheels. I'm your host, Johnny Roblox, and you all know my co-host, Justin, Space Cadet, Bird, and Uncle, the Earth isn't flat, you fucktards, <laughs> Ken. This episode is being brought to you by Get Lowered Cycles, your one-stop shop for all things Harley and Harley related. Today, we are discussing Eric Buell's fuel, and we are having an EV bike spec sheet shootout. What's going on, guys? That was my favorite intro of all time. Yeah? two space related things that was dope <laughs> you know i've been practicing the spec sheet shootout oh yeah that was good oh the f- it kept on coming out like shit spec shit shit out spec spec shit shit out shitty shit shit i mean it'd be accurate since we are talking about ev bikes yeah <laughs> are they real bikes kind of like bicycles just a shit shootout yeah so you guys doing all right it's been it's been a few days since we've hung out yeah yeah, yeah. Sp- how, how, how long has it been? I spent I spent three hours talking to an eighty year old Vietnam vet today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and, and ignoring I, us. And I know. and I just went to go get my chaps priorities. Fixed. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, he's an honorary old bastard. And I like him. <laughs> <laughs> Found your spirit animal. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, seriously. <laughs> I walk in and I was like, yeah, yeah. I was talking to the the lady who who met me. I was, I need to get my my chaps fixed. You know, take in the belt. You know, add some extra punches to the belt and mm-hmm. to the back. And like, it shouldn't be that. Shouldn't be that hard. It's Miller time. And <laughs> sponsored by Monster. Yeah, right. <laughs> Not Give us a call. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and the guy was like, you know, I nearly kicked your fucking ass out of here. I was like, really? Wow. Okay. He's <laughs> like, well, one, you're a biker. I was like, okay. And he's like. And two, when I heard you say, well, it shouldn't be that hard, all I could think was, well, if it's not that fucking hard, why don't you go do it? (laughs) Well. Respect. Not many people would say that in person. Right? That's some online troll shit. Oh, yeah. Straight straight, (laughs) straight to the point. (laughs) And then you spent three hours hanging out with him. Yeah. That's cool. Like, did we just become best friends? We kind of did. Did y'all fucking do karate in the basement? No, his wheelchair wouldn't let him do that. (laughs) He's got one of those fucking tank wheelchairs, though. Yeah, someone didn't try hard enough is what I'm hearing. (laughs) I can throw some bungee cords onto his leg. and (laughs) He can stand up with that fucking tank thing. It's pretty badass. (laughs) When you say tank thing, is that like the oxygen tracks? He's got fucking tank tracks on his fucking chair. Oh, Oh, okay. Yeah. Tank tank treads. Goddamn iron gimp. Yeah. (laughs) All right, so let's talk Eric Buell. Now, some of our listeners, I I don't know who, but some of them may not actually know who Eric Buell is. So quick, very quick rundown. Are you sure it's going to be quick? Because it takes up like a whole page of show notes. Well, I'm going to go through it quick. I'll see. All right, Buell was an AMA racer uh, for Superbike and Formula One series back in the mid to late 70s while he's attending college. He got his start at Harley-Davidson in 1979. At Harley, his primary notables were for fixing the stability issues with the FXR and the chassis refinements that made it a great bike and implementing the company's electronic chassis testing program. In late 84, early 85, Buell left the motor company, star Buell Motor Company, where he was selling the RW750 race bike for AMA Formula One series. However... The spring of 85, they canceled Formula One for that. So he didn't have anyone to sell his bikes to. At that point, he got a hold of a bunch of the Harley RR1000 motors, built a brand new bike out of that, and just kind of went crazy with it. I said the RR motors, the XR1000 race motors that he created his RR1000 motorcycle with. Now, with the motor, he created a super stiff and light frame where he also patented the uniplanar, uniplanar. Come on. How do you say that? I think it's uniplanar. Okay. He, that system, which is where the engine was rubber mounted to the frame, allowing for vertical and longitudinal movement, but prevented lateral movement of the motor and the rear suspension. Yeah, he practiced this. (laughs) (laughs) Uh... During this time, Buell also had a ton of innovative ideas that caught the eye of Harley-Davidson. Rumor is he was snuck on the cruise that the Harley dealer show was happening on. And someone from Harley got him in front of a bunch of dealers. And they all agreed to sell his bikes at their dealerships. 
So it's kind of cool. All right. So in the early 90s, Harley ended up buying a 51% stake in Buell. And in 2003, they took complete control, uh, distributing Buell lineup in a few Harley dealerships. Now, a few is kind of a misnomer because it was like 60% of their dealerships had the Buell uh, motorcycle line available. During Harley Part 2 years, Buell had this awesome design concept where you have a frame that instead of having a steel frame, they went to aluminum and it was hollowed out so they can put fuel in it. Aluminium. Al- aluminium? No, it's fucking aluminum. That's one word I don't agree with. You're adding, <laughs> you're adding shit in there. Aluminium. <laughs> so fuel in the, in the frame and then use the swing arm to store the oil. And what this allowed for was lowering the center of gravity. And no one had ever done it. Plus, with his frame, it was super rigid. So, pretty cool idea. Um, And he was the only one doing it. So, in 2008, Buell broke away from using the Sportster motors, which is what they had in all of their Buell motorcycles. I think they had like five or six primary models going at this time. And... Eric Buell teamed up with Rotax to go to a 72 degree V twin motor. And that's where the 1125 R came from. However, in 2009, Harley shuttered Buell primarily because of the economic downturn and the fact that Buell motor Buell motorcycles had never made a profit. Thanks Obama. Really? Never. Never turned a profit. Never turned a profit until that very last year. The 1125R turned it around and this and 1125CR. But Eric went from Harley. You know, this was his second departure and starting his own company. He went to Eric Buell Racing. That went from 2009 until 2015, which it then went bankrupt. Uh Eric Buell holds 38 U.S. patents, the last one being published in 2012. All right, so there is Eric Buell in a nutshell. That 1125R looks pretty cool. That was a badass bike. Look at that front. Look at that front brake. Wow, that's that's large. So the day that they shuttered Buell, all Buell motorcycles were on sale for 50 percent off. Damn. Really? Oh. They had to clear that the inventory. Yep. So one of the guys I worked with at this time, I was still working at Harley. And one of the guys I worked with had just bought an 1125R. Damn. <laughs> I'd be pissed. And, well, he kind of turned it around. He went and bought two more. I was going to say, if, if I was him, I would go and buy as many as I could afford. So, but yeah, the years of Eric Buell Racing, they continued building race parts for the 1125R. It's kind of a I mean, the bike itself was badass. Yeah. I mean, it's a cool looking bike. Yeah. I'd it, like to strip it down and make it a naked bike. That'd be dope. <laughs> so let's talk about fuel. F U E L L. This is where Eric Buell is the chief technology officer of the company. Uh, luckily, he's not in charge of any of the finances. Because <laughs> <Thankfully. laughs> clearly, that doesn't work for him. Um, but <laughs> did you see what fuel. It's an acronym. Oh, no. Oh, man. I did not this, see that. Oh, you didn't? Oh, it's, it's right here in the show notes. It stands for Freedom, Urban, Electric, Love, Life. Okay. Who, Stick who, with fuel. Who let him do that? I'd say who added the extra L? I, the love is where it threw me off. <laughs> uh, they're starting out with two bikes, and I'm putting bikes in quotes because one is a bicycle and one is a urban-only motorcycle. So I don't give a shit about the bicycle. So let's only focus on the fuel flow. Uh, it's a sport bike inspired urbanite with the following specs. Urbanite. That's yeah. a dumb word. <laughs> this is taken from <laughs> their site. Oh, I know. I looked at their site. <laughs> like, like millennial. Uh, they have two power plant options, a 35 kilowatt and an 11 kilowatt power plant. Zero to 16, 2.7 seconds. That's quick as fuck. Top which, speed, which doesn't surprise me with it's the way electric bike. motors yeah. work. Yeah, 
Uh, top speed is 85 miles per hour, range of 150 miles. Harley. Yeah, <laughs> right? Um, charge time is 30 minutes. Harley. Yes. Harley. <laughs> yeah. Um, the price point. Now, <laughs> Harley. <laughs> Eleven nine ninety five. Jesus. For the big motor, ten nine ninety five for the smaller motor. They're totally going for the popcorn approach. Yeah. 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 In case you guys know what the popcorn approach, it's an economic. I don't know if it's an economic term, but uh, it's when you go to the movies. If you look at, say, for example, if they had a, a twelve ounce bucket of popcorn and they want nine dollars for it, that sounds like an absurd price. But if you take a twelve ounce bucket of popcorn, put it next to a sixty four ounce bucket of popcorn, and price that at twelve dollars, now it doesn't seem so absurd. But you think in your mind, oh, only three dollars more for the sixty four ounce. Obviously, I'm going to go for that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, our listeners well, and our viewers can check them out at fuel f u e l l dot u s, where you can actually pre-order yours today for five hundred bucks. That's bet, a fair price. I bet you get it before you get the FTR. <laughs> <laughs> so, and here's what's cool: you put your deposit down, you can get a refund of your deposit all the way up to the day before your bike goes to assembly. Really? <laughs> yeah, that's saying something right there. So, so, you know, read more into this. It says that their propri- the fuel's proprietary motor comes in two flavors, according to this God article. Damn. Flavors. So fucking stupid. The 11 and 35. Yeah. The 11 kilowatt is a 15 horse. Of course, 15 horse. Yeah. I guess, however you do that. And the 35 kilowatt is 48. So back to that popcorn approach. You're going from a 15 to 48. You're tripling your horsepower for a thousand dollars. Yeah. Yep. Well, and the range is going to be longer with the uh, the thirty five kilowatt out or thirty five kilowatt than the eleven. The only thing that I could see benefiting the eleven kilowatt, and I'm sure this is going to change in the next decade, but some states, if it's under a certain kilowatt, you don't have to register it, mm. or it's registered as a moped and not a motorcycle, something like that. I I read it briefly. But. So I th- something I was reading, it's the licensing. As far as, like, you don't have to have a motorcycle license? You don't have to have a motorcycle license for the smaller one. Yeah. So, what do you guys think about this? Before we go into the real meat of this episode, what do y'all think about the uh, the fuel flow? I think it looks great in pictures. And I'll, I'm going to leave it on that cliffhanger because I've got another point that I need to bring up in the shootout. It's kind of Tron-esque. It is. And it's... It, and it's and it, and and just make sure I read this correctly. the The motor is in the rear wheel, correct? Yes. The in yes yes the in, the engine the the drivetrain is yeah. all on the rear wheel. Now they're not the first to do no. this. No. So, but a lot of the big dogs are not going this route. No. This is more of an electric bike concept. Yeah. Yeah. You see that more in electric bikes. So is it is it called like a motor hub? Is that what they're calling them? Just a wheel motor. I know, yeah. I know with electric vehicles in general, you get more power if you build it that way. But, of course, right. it's harder to do that because you really have to make that motor compact. Yeah, yeah. Whereas, you know, if you actually use the full available space on a motorcycle frame, mm-hmm. you can really beef up those numbers. And then you just have to have, you know, your transmission, your drive, whether you use shaft or chain or whatever. Mm-hmm. He said shaft. Shaft. My, back to the looks of it. It looks like something Eric Buell came up with. Absolutely. I mean, Which is always like, every time I looked at his bikes, I felt like he was two days away from making it perfect. Like, there's always just a little, it always looks just a little bit odd. It looks like 95% perfect. But he's kind of an odd cat in I haven't, general. I, I haven't met him, so. I mean, I, I had the opportunity to. He's he's odd. Oh. He's an but but usually but he's a genius but, designer. Yeah, usually most that's they're not are. normal. Yeah, that they're not normal people. So you look looking at this one. Yeah, the little green Tron thing going on there. Yeah, so I'll I feel put, like that I'll need, put this picture up in the video for the YouTube. I feel like that needs to be your battery level indicator. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> that's not a bad idea. It, I mean, it, it goes so, from green to orange to yellow to red. Yeah. Or yellow, that could, that orange, totally, red. Someone will totally hack that and make that happen. 
Wouldn't be just, hard. What would be the purpose of it, though? You're not going to be like... What, what, what's, what's the purpose of <laughs> I know. putting any shit on a bike? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So tr- let's transition to our EV bike spec shootout. But before we do, let's take a break to hear from our sponsors. Hey folks, we have partnered with Get Lowered Cycles to give the Between Two Worlds listeners something extra. When you spend $100 or more, Get Lowered will hook you up with a free Get Lowered t-shirt. All you have to do is head over to getlowered.com, choose the parts and gear you need, and when you check out, use the coupon code B2WPODCAST and put your shirt size in the notes section. We are back. So, who wants to kick this off? Who has a... Do you want me to just go through the specs on each one? How do you want me to do this? I don't know. You're the fucking host. Okay. So <laughs> here's here's what we have. We have one bike from zero. We have the Harley Livewire. We have the Lightning LS218. We have the Arc Vector, which we broke here on the podcast, what, like 10 episodes ago? I don't yeah, remember. It's been yeah. a while. And then we also have the Fuel Flow because why not we throw it in here and here's what we're looking at from the shootout perspective range now range is a little touchy topic because not all of these bikes have highway range or only city range so i'm trying i try to find combined range across all of them well i think that looking at all the different ones i think most of the time they're putting that range out there as the combined range yeah. At least in what I've seen. They haven't set, from what I've read, is they haven't set a certain standard to mm-hmm. make the range even across the board. There's yeah. two models that they're basing it off of, and based off those two models, even sticking by those, it still can vary. Yeah. Um, we're also looking at charge time. And all of this is done in minutes because of a. it's just a clusterfuck out there. Oh, yeah. So we did it by minutes. The spread on that is, is insane. drastic. Yeah. Uh, zero to 60 time, top speed, price, and then the only part of this that is completely subjective is the coolness factor. So all three of us come up with our own coolness factor of all these bikes. And in the show notes, we will have links to where you can go and see what all of the bikes look like. So head over to between two wheels.com. The two is spelled out T W O go to the show notes section and look for episode 28. All right. So the zero, I went with their brand new model, the S R F it has a range of 161 miles charge time. And there's an asterisk on this. <laughs> 270 minutes that's four and a half hours however yeah they have other options that you can put that will drastically drop that down to almost 40 minutes that 270 is plugging in directly into like an outlet in your garage exactly yeah now they have okay. they have they have a bunch of premium upgrades you can yeah. do well, of course and this one's also fast charge compatible as well correct so you can use the Tesla chargers and all that nonsense. Yep. So range, charge time, zero to 60. Now, this model has not actually hit the streets yet. They're saying about 3.9 seconds based on the SR motor. That's still fast as fuck. 3.9 is quick. <laughs> I mean, that's the new motor (laughs) is actually supposed to be faster. I believe it. But until we could actually find some hard numbers, I went with the 3.9, understanding that that's probably going to go down. I feel like they're kind of taking the Tesla approach with their numbers because Tesla did a lot of very similar thing. It was with their ludicrous mode. I think they put it out. It's like 2.9 approximately, but it was getting 2.6 on tests. So I think it's better to shoot high in this than undercut it. Top speed for the Zero SRF is 124 miles per hour. That's fucking quick. The price tag, yeah. 18995 I'm going to skip the coolness factor until the end. Comes in two colors. Yeah. It's almost the Ford, <laughs> Ford method there. Um, so let's move over to the Livewire. 
Boo. Range. <laughs> <laughs> Boo, you suck. <laughs> uh, the live wires range 140 miles. Now, this I took this off of Harley Davidson's website. Not all the media sources that have yeah. a bunch of different numbers. So, according to Harley, 140 mile range. Charge time is actually pretty decent at 60 minutes. Zero to 60, three seconds. Top speed, 95 miles per hour. Mm-hmm. Price tag twenty nine thousand eight hundred starting. Damn it. God, that's more than or just just under twice <sighs> of the zero. Yeah, it's so painful to hear that over and over and over again. Well, it's only ten thousand, eleven thousand less than the zero, or more than the zero. Okay, which is eighteen thousand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, moving over to the Lightning LS two eighteen. Now, here's something to understand about the Lightning. It is a high like not even high it is a super performance yep. electric motorcycle it is a race bike it's it's the equivalent of your like 1000 rrs when you look at like like leader bikes yeah yeah the range if you're barely touching the throttle is 180 <laughs> miles so so far it's the the longest range charge time 120 minutes Zero to 60, 2.2 seconds. Just fucking hold on. (laughs) Top speed, 218 miles per hour. Now, does it come with like a crotch strap to like hold you in? (laughs) I I feel like it needs a butt plug to hold your shit in because you're going to shit yourself. Yeah. So both the zero to 60 time and the top speed they got in Bonneville. Oh, fuck. So wow. this is the fastest electronic or electric production motorcycle. 200 horsepower. God damn. According to Wikipedia, 200 horsepower, 150 kilowatts. Yeah. Jesus. Claimed. Claimed. But, so it's interesting. I was looking at the, the Lightning, and it says they've been producing this motorcycle since 2014. Yes. This is the... They've been producing the LS since 2014. If you look at their models, it, it, their model name is the top speed. Oh, yeah. So uh, as you go back and look, you'll see how much they've improved over the years. 168 foot-pounds of torque. God damn. Fuck. <laughs> Direct drive transmission. 496 pounds wet. <laughs> wow. <What>? So, <laughs> so if two of us got on there, we're actually heavier than the bike. Golly. If two of you got on there, you'd be about the weight of an ultra <laughs> combined. Fuck you. Fuck you. So, <laughs> hey, listen here, fuckface. <laughs> uh, the price tag on this makes sense. Yeah. For one, it makes it sense. Fits. It I fits. think it's spot on. Thirty-eight thousand eight hundred nine grand more than the live wire. <laughs> but I think it fits though. It does. Nine grand it makes more. Sense. You get twice the top speed, a quicker zero to sixty, a longer range. Yep. But oh, no, no. but it takes double the time to charge the much uh, larger motor. I'd be okay with that. <laughs> you know? You're, you're talking the difference of an hour. Eh. Yeah. 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 It's okay. So let's now talk about the Arc Vector. It is officially out. I don't know if they've sold any other than to the super rich. Don't, aren't they no? only making only like 200 of them? I think so. Yeah. You mean Brad's not going to buy one? <laughs> Wait, what? Does he have a job yet? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Uh, the Arc Vector <laughs> has the longest range, but this is unconfirmed. This is according to Arc, but 270 miles. Its charge time is 40 minutes. I don't see how they do that. What? The charge time? Yeah. So all that is is programming. It's application. It's basically how quickly do you want to wear down this battery? Yeah. And, and well, and really, that's what I was getting at because you know you think you charge your phone from, you know, empty to full. Mm-hmm. It even with a fast charger, it takes what two hours. But it's going through a USB cable, not a DC yeah. converted True. power <laughs> bank. You but know? but like but like Justin said, that depends on how fast you want to wear out that freaking battery. True. Something's got to give. Agreed. And on a. You know, hundred and seventeen thousand dollar bike. I haven't got there yet, but okay. Yeah, don't worry. Spoiler. <laughs> it was coming. Yeah. 
Zero sixty and three point two. Top speed of one hundred and twenty five. The price is a pretty well established home. Yeah. One hundred and seventeen thousand dollars. Damn. <laughs> I'm now, just thinking of like the cars you can get for that. It blows my mind. I could, but, buy, I could buy several, multiple. <laughs> but the bike is 100% customizable. Yeah. Everything is hand done. The carbon fiber, hand laid, the stitching on the seat, hand stitched. It looks cool as fuck. It's, yeah. <laughs> is it so, real carbon fiber? It's not that fake. It's not that fiber. fake shit. Um, now we go to the fuel flow. Now we've already kind of gone over this, but we'll rehash it real quick. Range 150 miles. Charge time 30 minutes. Zero to 60, 2.7 seconds. Top speed 85. Price tag 11,995. Interesting fact here. It's the cheapest. It's the fastest charging. And it's second place for the quickest zero to 60. And it's also the slowest. And it's still under. Th- it's still under three seconds. <laughs> yeah, yeah, still under three seconds. Yeah. All right, so let's go to the coolness factor here. Do y'all want to talk about any of these specs first? So, so my I think thing, just to just to highlight, since you were kind of going through that, just to give people an understanding, you know, the best of each category. So, as far as range, we have Arc Vector in first place. We have the Live Wire in last place. Charge time, we have the Fuel Flow in first place, and the Zero SRF, granted with an asterisk, mm-hmm. in last place. Uh, zero to 60, the Lightning is in first place. The Zero SRF, once again, approximate at in last place. Uh, top speed, we have the Lightning in first place and the Fuel Flow in last place. Price, Arc Vector way out in first place for the most expensive <laughs> and the Fuel Flow as the least expensive. Now, did you notice, though, in the pricing, the massive jump from the Fuel Flow to the zero then from the zero to the harley and then to the lightning it's about ten thousand per model jump all right so let's go to the coolness factor justin i'm gonna have you lead us off the zero okay so when i was determining my coolness factor i took price out of the equation Mm -hmm. reason being is because we're not doing a what's the best bang for your buck but as in no dollar amount looked at what's the coolest. Because I think that a, you know, Camaro Z01, you know, sixty, seventy thousand dollar car can be as cool as a two hundred thousand dollar hypercar, in my mind. Uh so I gave this one an eight out of ten. Uh mm-hmm. ten being the coolest. Uh reason being is I think that they're spot on on styling. Um I think the price point is spot on, even though I know I said I didn't take it into <laughs> account, but um no, I just think it's cool. Also, I really think that the company is cool as far as um, like how they do their social media. They're actually really active on social media. They reply to a lot of people on social media. And this just got posted uh, two days ago. They actually are racing in the Pikes Peak race. Okay, cool. They're racing their bike. Well, at least they won't Pikes have to worry Peak. about altitude issues on the carburetor. And That's what I'm saying, dude. All that. Racing is where this is going to take off. Yeah. Well, it's already taken off in dirt, right? Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't say taken off, but I mean, you're seeing it most often there. Yeah. Now, they have their own class now, don't they, for EV and dirt bike racing? Not the ones I've seen. Uh, no? Not, they were running the with ones gas? I, yeah. Uh, I watched um, the Red Bull Straight Rhythm. Now, that's not necessarily motocross, but they were going head-to-head with the combustion bikes. And the guy got third out of, like, 12. Nice. nice. Okay. Ken, what about you on coolness of the Zero? So... I'm not a big fan of electric bikes. What? <laughs> I think they're kind of fucking stupid. Just for the cost of them, what they're good for, It's they're definitely aimed at millennials, and I fucking hate millennials. Oh, that's rude. Well, hey, I never said I was a nice person. <laughs> <laughs> you see my shirt today? No one fucking owes you anything, man. So I give it a five. I'll, 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 know, I'll remember that when you ask for your paycheck. Like no one owes you anything. <laughs> yeah, see, I worked for that. That's a difference, though. Nah. Millennials would just ask for money. No. So, <laughs> so you gave it a five out of ten. I gave it a five out of ten. I didn't take into account price. Okay. Uh, just got figured. You know, if I'm looking at all these bikes and I got the money to buy all these bikes, you know, we'll just take that out. It looks kind of like a regular naked bike, like yeah. not a full naked bike, but it just kind of. Looks like all the other Japanese yeah. sport bikes. Yeah, it just kind of 
it looks all the same except for it's electric. Uh, the really, I think one of the worst things about it, of course, is the charge time, which I didn't. Yeah, you you weren't aware of what all the. If you tack on another three thousand dollars, it's about a forty minute charge time. Yeah, that that makes that the coolness factor goes down for that. I mean, they want to make their bikes as affordable and do as much as possible for yeah. th- for the market. No, right? I understand, but I, that's kind of shitty. Yeah. Okay. Fair yeah. enough. Fair enough. But overall, I mean, it 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 looks like if you were to line it up with any other you know, sport styled bike, mm-hmm. you wouldn't be able to tell right off the bat that it was an electric. True. Which, you know, I, I mean, I kind of want people to know if I had one, but at the same time, you don't want it to stand out and be gaudy. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Hey, it's, again, hundred percent subjective. Uh, for me, I went with an eight because it can be stealth mode. It looks just like all the other Japanese sport bikes. So when you pull up on the highway, now given you're not going to go very far, but when you want to go and mess around with, you know, some thousand cc sport bike and you leave them. Oh, yeah. Up to 161 miles or no, 124 miles per hour. No. No? No. It it does not have that kind of. uh, You would lead them for maybe the first 60 feet. Think so? Oh, yes. What what are this? So maybe not on the highway. If you're in the city, sixty feet. If you're on the highway, you're going to get destroyed. Okay, so urban only. Urban or, o- from a from a dig. Yeah, the electric bikes are going to win for the first sixty to hundred feet. Hmm. All right. Once once those leader bikes get a chance to get up into the RPM range, no contest. Really? Yeah. Why are there zero to sixty second times so far off from these? What do you mean? Like the leader bikes, zero sixties, they're not hitting three seconds. You're you're the it's the equivalent of taking like, say for example, a really lightweight WRX all wheel drive mm-hmm. compared to a Dodge Challenger. You're looking at it's gonna be quick off the line, but eventually once that bigger motor is able to get into its power band, game over. Fair enough. You can right. look at there's So there's zero tons. to sixty, the E V bike's gonna win. But zero to hundred, the leader bike's going to dominate. Absolutely. Okay. A lot of that has to do with no gearing, too. Okay. Yeah. Because you're granted, it's going to be a linear torque curve, mm-hmm. but depending on where you are on that torque curve and that power band, you could be way in in the red at that point. So so now you're now you're getting into driver skill. Eh, not even really. I mean, well, so torque from a dig, yes, because you are dealing with with launching the bike. But torque gets you off the line and gets your motorcycle moving. Yeah, horsepower is where it keeps you moving. Yes. So if you're looking at curves, the torque starts dipping and the horsepower is still climbing on most dyno tests. So, but yeah, I give it an eight. I like the stealth factor that it does blend in with all the other bikes. Um. And honestly, that'd be the one bike on this list I think I would buy just because it's the most balanced from what you get from a spec perspective and price. All right. Yeah. To, to put it into comparison, just because I, I don't know the zero to 60 times on bikes, the Ninja ZX7R. So that's not going to be the Later. race version. That's going to be the little bit. 700 you know, more, is that the 700 cc yeah yeah zero to 16 3.4 oh so, well it's, so it, it's kicking it's this bike zero. Yeah. yeah yeah well and we don't know what the actual but yeah yeah, yeah. it is <laughs> okay it's not going to be destroying them nearly as much as like when you look at like the tesla's racing the ferraris how the tesla just leaves it. a lot of that has to do with the four-wheel drive true so okay fair enough all right let's look at the live wire justin <laughs> Zero out of ten. Where did you rate the live wire and why? I had to give it a seven, which was being very generous, but that's a lot to do with aesthetics. I think it's the... I would say it's tied for second as far as looks um, with the with the zero. Okay. Of course, the reason I gave it a seven out of eight is because it lacks in pretty much every other category. <laughs> but sure. I also had to give a little bit bonus points because it is 
Harley and it is their first. It's it's not something you'd expect from Harley. Yeah, it's, I agree it'd be with like that. Dodge making like a a high powered hatchback. It's like it's not what they're known for. It's not what they do. Yeah, hmm, cool. I, I absolutely get on board with that. Which yeah, and that's kind of kind of where I sit with it. They're stepping out of their box. It's different from the entire Harley lineup. Mm-hmm. And it still has, you know, some of that Harley, you know, the Harley lines. They're kind of sticking with what they know as far as the design goes. Oh, the I aesthetics. thought you meant like the price line. No, oh yeah, that too, right? <laughs> <laughs> it's their CV. They, they haven't labeled it yet, but it's definitely their CVO. <laughs> the Livewire CVO. Yeah, oh, live God, wire they CVO. do that. Oh, oh you know it's you coming. You know it's coming. Yeah, give it a year. Oh, yeah. That's all you need. One year, oh. you will have it. Yeah, so that's kind of why, you know, I gave it a six. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it looks different. Uh, you would definitely, in my opinion, be able to look at it and be like, "That's not a regular Harley." You, you look at it, you're you're not thinking Harley at all. No. Oh yeah. So that's why I gave it a little bump to a six. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. I'm I'm right there with you. I I went six on this one as well. I'm giving them brownie points for stepping out of their box. Where I'm doing just deducting the shit out of it the price point and the fact that it took them a decade and this is all they actually have to show for it that that annoys me because i know their r&d department has some amazing people working there why don't you let them actually do their job get all the old fucks out of the r&d stop trying to limit shit and all this go and just have a badass motorcycle yeah EV or not, whatever. But this is too tame. I think to that point, I don't know the R&D department. I I don't know any of the the specs behind it, but I almost feel like that's what they did is they gave them free range. And I listened to a bunch of engineering podcasts and they said that when, when you, the worst thing that an engineer wants, like the thing they want the least is a blank slate. When you tell someone, yeah, they want take to a motorcycle and, and make it the best, they hate that. If you say, here's a motorcycle frame, we need to keep it under 500 pounds, we need to have it at least 200 miles range, we have to keep the price point under 20000 Yeah, then it gives them a problem to solve. Exactly. Yeah. So it, it, it could have gone either way. Yeah. I, I would love to interview someone and see wh- how exactly it happened. With how much we talk shit, I don't think Harley's is ever going to... Let any of their people talk to us. I can dream. Never. We live in a country where you can identify as a dragon. Anything's possible. <laughs> uh, let's move over to the Lightning. Justin, where are you at on the Lightning LS218? So I gave it an eight. And some of the things that helped Harley kind of hurt this bike. Um, I think that the top speed is ridiculous. Zero to 60 is ridiculous. Range is decent, but to your point, I think that's a very conservative range. This seems more like a track bike, which I feel like if you're riding it like a track bike, you'd maybe get about 30 to 50 miles out of it. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. And, and kind of going back to my original point, that's, this is what they do. Mm-hmm. This is all they do. Yeah. So it's... and. And, and it doesn't hard, look that great either. It's hard to go production bike because what is production in EV? 200, 500. That's all you're really seeing. Yeah. So you can't really think about it from the same perspective as your standard motorcycles. Mm-hmm. So, And it looks exactly like every other sport bike out there. It well, yeah, looks it, more like sport bikes than the Zero does. Yeah. It, it's a super sport body with a ev motor in it yep that's so, all it is ken sorry i was looking up what a production vehicle is <laughs> well it it all depends on man our research department is spot on on this podcast yeah <laughs> <laughs> wikipedia so i think the lightning's fucking dope <laughs> <laughs> okay what'd you score it oh i gave it a 10 okay i mean you're fucking you, stupid <laughs> no when you look at its range the charge time, the freaking zero to sixty and the top speed, that's a fucking dope bike. And it's priced accurately. I will I will give it that point. I will say that the thirty eight eight, although expensive for any motorcycle, is spot on for those kind of numbers. Yeah. But you also have to take into account you can get pretty much that exact 
high speed as well as that exact zero to 60 for about eh, 11 to 12 grand. But if you're a fucking millennial, you know, who just got their first, you know, big, big time. But this is green. You're a fucking millennial. You're not going to build a four thirty eight thousand dollars bike. <laughs> but I think it's a fucking dope bike. Okay. I mean, just plain and simple. It looks great. It's got great specs. I mean, the only thing that could really hurt it is going to be its price tag. But then again, it's a track bike. Yeah. It's, it's That's what it's for. You're going to get to run the track for 30 minutes and then sit and wait for 120 minutes while it charges again. you got to let that motor cool off, right? <laughs> and, and hope that they have a, a fast charger there. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, I went kind of in the middle. I went 7.5. And... <sighs> I don't buy their 180 mile range. I don't either. I just, I don't. Uh, yeah. The, maybe in the city, if you're not going over 50 miles an hour yep. and you don't have any stop and go traffic, you'll probably get to 180 miles. They Whatever formula they use to get to that. Um, but again, this is innovation. They're pushing an EV motorcycle motor to this yeah i love that because innovation breeds competition that's not how that word goes whatever it's the same thing <laughs> competition breeds innovation but when they come out with this everyone else is going to have to compete now yes they are twenty thousand dollars more than the flagship zero but it's a niche market I would love to see this thing. I wouldn't do it. I would love to see it run at Bonneville. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I wouldn't want to be on there doing no? anything Hell near no. 200 miles they an fuck, hour. If they tossed you the, the little battery and said, take it for a spin. I don't think oh, you carry I'll, the I'll, battery. I would, I would ride it. <laughs> I wanted to say something electrical-like rather they than key. strap on that backpack. And <laughs> <laughs> I would ride it, but I, I want to see it hit 218. Now, fuck that, dude. honestly... That is not their top speed. No, no. If they're doing that at Bonneville, fuck no, that's not their top speed. The, they actually had a run that was faster, but this was the average oh, okay. of all their runs. That's fair. They, it's probably not much faster. No, <laughs> it was like 219, 220. But the, you're but, also running on salt. <laughs> exactly. Hard you're salt. not on, but it's, I mean. I mean, if you crash, you need antiseptic. If you crash, you're probably going to die. No. Yeah. At 218? No, no not with them fancy race suits they got. If they were able to run that on, on a long, very long strip, asphalt, I would I would be shocked if they didn't hit 225. Hmm. Or if they just cranked up the uh, output of the motor. Because, uh-huh. you know, they're, they're governing that some way to make sure it's safe. Safe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Relative. I mean, <laughs> but... You know, there's all these motors are being governed oh, of course. at some point because either the battery overheats yeah. at randomly X speed, combusts. Yeah. Or yeah, yeah, it pulls Blows a Samsung up. and catches on fire. Those lithium yeah. ion batteries are dangerous as fuck. Mm-hmm. All right. So moving on to the arc vector. Ken, let's start with you. I fucking hate it. <laughs> and I gave it a generous score of four. Why? Why? <laughs> why do i hate it or why do i give it a generous score both yes i hate it because it looks like some fake ass futuristic bullshit you realize it looks exactly like the confederate motorcycles right no it does not Boom. i disagree completely completely it's got a good range i mean really that's all i can give it and i don't buy that range either <laughs> you know i mean hey when you look when you're going off a of paper this is what you got to deal with yeah, it's yeah. got a good range and a good battery charge time but i think that battery charge time bullshit and it's going to fuck shit up some way somehow that's going to fuck something up it's got a kind of a and eh, top speed but i mean i mean most motorcycles you can go fucking fast anyway so yep. it's it's yeah. whatever uh and then yeah i did look at the fucking price and that's goddamn ridiculous I'll agree with that. I think it is goddamn ridiculous. Now, for those who haven't listened to our Arc Vector show, this is from Land Rover Jaguar, the Skunk Works, the ex lead of their Skunk Works department. I used to think it was a cool bike, but just the more I looked at it and the more I read about it, just ah, just it just irritates me. I'd be. I want to know 
without the motor side, what are the, all of the components that are in that bike? What is the cost? If you want to go try to build this, what is the cost of the Olin suspension front and rear, the custom wishbone suspension up front? It's, all of these things. What I see happening here, because Land Rover Jaguar, they're actually making all the motors for the Formula E cars. Mm. Um, so I think out of all these five, this definitely has the most R and D and best performing motor. And honestly, with what I'm seeing them doing with the, their EV, EV cars or EV vehicles, that charge time might not be that much bullshit. I, I, it's probably polished up a little bit, but I think what we're seeing here is Jaguar Land Rover trying to recoup some of that R and D similar to what we expect happening with the live wire, Mm -hmm. except they're actually giving them something that's one of a kind. So for example, the stuff that's happened in, in formula E, they've already taken a good chunk of that research and put it into their production models. The, the, it, it was the, um, the, I think it's called the Jaguar type E it's like a crossover bullshit, but it was rated the best EV car as far as overall specs by, pretty much everybody so yeah fair i think that's what we're seeing because i mean of course there was still a lot of r&d to take that motor from a car application and apply those technologies to a bike oh yeah you got to shrink that shit down and exactly that, that's hard that's not yeah. easy to do but sell 200 of them on literally pre as pretty much the most premium materials you can get make it something that the jay leno's are going to want to buy oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah i'm sure he's already got one. Oh, for sure yeah so Ken, you're the only one who went that route. <laughs> <laughs> Justin and I both went tens on this thing. But to the price point, they're not just making probably the most innovative motorcycle on the market today. They also integrated a suit, yeah. a helmet that has a full heads up display, all kinds of things to go along with that experience. And rich people. I don't like that, but rich people do. do rich they make, people do they want make that the three X. They, I mean, <laughs> they want the total experience. experience. Gonna need that thirty-eight inch inseam. You know. <laughs> so, Justin, you gave it a ten. Top two yeah. reasons: uh, the looks and the uniqueness of it. Yeah, stupid looking bike. I, I'm right there with you. Those are yeah. my top two reasons. It the fact that it is super unique. It is a ground up motorcycle design. Yeah. They, they didn't take anything. Nothing on there looks like a motorcycle if you just look at the pieces of it. Except for the fucking two wheels and the typical fucking body, and then you throw some Tron lights on it, you know. But the body doesn't look like anything yeah, else. No. I mean, it, it you takes can't, some You can't say that things. when you just gave the Lightning a 10, which it, is literally just a fucking Suzuki and I think with it looks a motor. Dope. I think it looks dope. <laughs> All right. Oh Jesus! <laughs> Before there's any podcast pops, let's uh, let's move over to the fuel flow. Um, Dust pop. <laughs> I uh, I'll start this one. I gave it a six because I don't think the company's going to be around long enough to actually do anything. No one wants. Well, maybe they do. Maybe they want that urban night. Fuck. <laughs> the urbanite <laughs> motorcycle, maybe that's what they want. That's what they all are, though. But the reason I gave it that high of a number is because of the price. They they saw what yeah. they had, and they said, hey, let's make this to where the millennial or whoever, the people coming up, the younger generation, that 18 to 27-year-old who has college debt, who just moved to San Francisco and is trying to get their tech job going, they can actually afford this. And it's better than them trying to get a car. It gives them something that's green. They can charge it by the time they go through the line at Starbucks. (laughs) So the range doesn't really matter, but it can go 150 miles, allegedly. Well, yeah. So I, I gave it a six because I think the what they've done works if it actually is long enough of a history to do something. I just don't think the company's going to be around long enough. Now, I looked into the other folks that are part of the owners and leadership team of this. They actually have some uh, somewhat of a good background, but they're all tech company people. Yeah. So they have a shitload of money that they're just trying to do something else. And I hope they succeed. 
that I, I, I don't know how well versed you are, or any of the listeners are, but it sounds to me like we're looking at the motorcycle version of uh, the company Faraday, which was basically it when they first started, when Tesla first started, that was like they were one and two. Was that was Tesla and Faraday, which is funny because they're two inventors yeah. that yeah. had to do with electricity. But anyways, same story. Everyone that was backing it was just in the tech industry. They didn't really have anybody that was, you know, had motorcycle industry or any even automotive industry backing it. So I think that they have a chance, but I think they're going to be facing a lot of the same problems. Yeah, fair enough. All right. Justin, go ahead with your scoring. So on paper, on on our sheet, I put a seven, but I'm actually going to lower it down. And the reason being is because now that we've talked through, I realize I don't like it as much as I thought I did. <laughs> so I put a seven, but I'm going to lower it down to a five. Okay. And hear me out. So I mentioned earlier, it looks great in pictures. It looks like a Tron bike. It looks super futuristic. It photographs well. I also like the fact that you can put a helmet inside the seat. I think that's really fucking cool. Or the that gas tank? Or is it the seat? It's The seat lifts up and then it kind of goes into the ga- where the gas tank would be. Okay. That's cool. Um, but I don't know if either of you watched the video of someone riding it. It looks fucking stupid. <laughs> so uh, we've seen videos of someone riding the light wire. It looks like a regular motorcycle. Mm-hmm. If you go and look at the fuel flow, there's something wrong with the sizing. There's something wrong with the proportions of it. It looks fucking dorky as shit. It looks like it's got a short wheelbase. That might be it. He seems like he's it, it looks like it's too small. Like it mm. looks like he's almost like riding like a mini bike. Something about it. So like he's wrong. on a Vespa. Similar, yeah. Yeah. So going back to what I said at the very beginning of the episode, Eric Buell got it to that 90, 95 percent and then one thing's gonna <laughs> fuck it up. Seriously, if you watch the video, it looks dork like at first I was like, that thing looks awesome. I'd love to ride it. And then after watching that video, I was like Mm-mm. Is I'm it on their website? On yes. Okay. And Uncle Ken. Well, I gave it a seven. Just overall, and and I did for this one. I, I absolutely did take price into account. I think for what you can get, it's a great bike. Mm-hmm. It, it's got it, though it does have that stupid futuristic styling <laughs> shit. <laughs> You know, it, it looks like the prototypes they put out. Mm-hmm. You know, that's the problem I have with the Arc. It looks like the prototypes they put out, and then when they give you the actual car, you're like, wait, what, what the fuck is this? Like, what happened? The concept doesn't meet yeah. the production model. Exactly. Okay. I think the fuel is going to be com- is going to be competing with zero. But I'm with you. I don't think they're going to stick around. I think I think Buell he's ran his game. Yeah. You know. Again, but, talented genius. But just. They, yeah. Bad luck. They they hit the mileage. You know, of course, you know, we don't have any proof of these mileages, but you know, the mileage, the charge time kind of is kind of weird again with that low charge time. Well, it's a small motor. Yeah. <clears throat> when you got your two motors. And the the 0 to 60, I mean that's cool. I think the only thing really hurting them will be that top speed, 85 miles an hour. Now, I realize that like like they said they're marketing it towards the urbanites you're living in the city. Well, they, they are saying this is not meant for highway. But still, you look, someone who lives in San Antonio, how many highways we have? True. You know. 85 can do any highway in the U.S., though. Yeah, yeah. but, you know, when you get into passing speeds. Oh, I'm not I'm, I'm not saying the range is going to drop. I just don't think that that top speed is going to be a, an issue. No. I, th- I think it will because they, they talk about their cruising speed being 55. That's going to hurt them. If I can't take it on the highway to drive across San Antonio for 30 minutes... You know, well, San motors- Antonio is a bad example. We have terrible urban density. Yeah, I mean, we're we're seventh biggest city in the country, but we rank like thirty seven in well, density. Even driving across Dallas Fort Worth, you know, once again, numerous huge highways. Huge city. But see, they're they're marketing it towards <laughs> New York know, the, City, the San the Francisco. Urbanites. No, this is like Austin. Yeah, this would be like the Austin commuter. This would be the they inner can, city Houston they commuter. Can, they yeah. can market it towards them, but people in these other cities are going to buy it, and then that's going to be yeah. a kick in their pants yeah. that they're going to regret. All right. But it's still, a, I think it's a really great concept for a bike. I'm, I'm glad to see it happening. Mm-hmm. Like with, with all motorcycles, I'm glad to see it happening. And I do hope they succeed. And I hope that they do make something better. Yeah. Cool. All right. So let's move into the closing argument. Now, I did not put this in the show notes because 
I just now remembered that I didn't put it in the show notes. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> I was going to say, I thought you were going to say, because I didn't want you guys to get an answer. I'm like, you act like I read the show notes. <laughs> All, right. <laughs> All right. So when will EV bikes be commercially viable for highway riding for what our petrol bikes are meant for? Oof. How far out? Five years? No. Ten years? No, I'm thinking ten. Or 15? I'm thinking ten. Mm. I'm split between ten and fifteen. I think that with all the new regulations coming down, mm-hmm. it will force people or force companies to get better. I don't know. I know we've brought this up before. I don't know if we're going to see it in the faster charging time or maybe uh, like a battery swap type thing but mm. it's gonna be tough because yeah. i don't think that batteries have the unlimited potential no. like people think computers do i mean even now we're we're starting to peak at the level of computing power at, at, there was a time where there was like a formula like every five years we're actually reaching the point now where computers can't get any smaller or faster because <laughs> the wires are starting to enter the motherboards are starting to interact at an atomic level. Mm-hmm. So we're, we're about there. <laughs> yeah. So for me, I'm thinking between five and 10 really because mm. of the regulations and this technology has not met the same level as computer technology yet. It's, it's just not there. The leaps and bounds that are happening every year look at zero every year they come out with a new model it has longer range faster motorcycle in general and well their charging time whatever but (laughs) but the ranges are getting further and further and further what they have to figure out is how do you get that battery to have a long lasting extended play on the release of the energy how that's what they have to figure out and as we've seen batteries in cell phones and and other lithium ion esque devices are getting longer 8 hours was the norm and everyone was okay with 8 hour charge or 8 hour charge on a cell phone now people get pissed off if this not going 14 15 hours so yeah. taking that in consideration battery technology is getting better Elon Musk is really pushing for better battery technology, not just for his cars, but in general. So I think in the next five to, I would say seven and a half to 10 years, we will see EV motorcycles that can go 250 miles on the highway at highway speeds. So anyways, we'll go ahead and close it out there. Thank you for tuning in to Between Two Wheels Podcast. To see the show notes for this and all of our episodes, to find links to our social media and Patreon page where we are raising money for Project Clean Slate, head over to our website at www.betweentwowheels.com. The two is spelled out T-W-O. On behalf of Justin, Uncle Ken, I am Johnny Roblox saying, be yourself unless you're a jerk. Then be someone better. Peace.